chapter 6, verse 31 up to 33. Okay? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or sh what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray for the enlightenment of your spirit as we listen to your word so that we will fathom the depth of your word, O God. We will uh, understand the truth behind your written words, O Lord. And most of all, Lord, we would not ignore, we would not uh, uh, simply disobey your word, but we will adhere, we will obey on your word as you meant what you say, O God. And uh, allow us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness all days of our lives, not just on Sundays, but every day, O God. And we claim, as we do and obey your will, all these things shall be added unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. We may now all be seated. Okay. Uh, did, did everybody, did someone not notice what is our topic for today? Okay. What could we have achieved? <laughs> You're just reading on the slide, isn't it? <laughs> so, if I ask you, what could have we achieved if we're not afraid? What do you think are those things? Especially from the verses that we've used today. From these verses, what are those things that could we achieve if we are not afraid? Any idea? <laughs> You're afraid of all these things? <laughs> you, didn't under, you didn't get my question. My question is, what are those things that we could achieve if we are not afraid? I think I made my question clear. Any idea? No, no, you don't, you don't get my question. You're just the same with Pastor Bobby. What are those things we could have achieved if we are not afraid. Peace of peace of mind. Okay, good one. What else? You're not afraid of all these things. They're, those are the blessings Jesus meant uh, that we are going to receive if we seek first His kingdom. So we should not be afraid of all those things. Yeah, we will not worry. That's good. We'll not worry. We'll, we'll have peace. No fear. Of course, you're not afraid. Then you have no fear. <laughs> okay. W one good thing is you will be happy if you're not afraid. We will be confident. Yes, very good. Number one. If you're not afraid, you will seek the kingdom of God. Okay, so at least you're, you, you, you have now an idea of what we will be talking about. Okay, so with the series of topic regarding fear, we, we have discussed damages caused by fear in the part. Then last week, what are we afraid of and how to overcome them. And then today, there could be so many things we could achieve if we're not afraid. Our aim for this topic, for us to be able to obey God's will by simply doing His word. Amen? Okay, and another one is for us to be aware of the so many things we could achieve if not for fear. If you're not afraid, we could do so many things. Amen? Okay, so first, we could seek the kingdom of God. Pastor, uh, you're back to the kingdom of God again. Well, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. What do you think is the relevance between the seeking the kingdom of God and fear? Any idea? Huh? Uh, that could be the other way around. If you are already in the kingdom of God, you have no fear. But 
if you are fearful, could you seek the kingdom of God? No. no. So, in other words, we could people could could seek the kingdom of God if we, they are not afraid. Okay, so the Gentiles are those who do not believe in God. Do you understand me? Gentiles are the unbelievers. They live on their sins, senses. They do not live by faith. For them for, to believe, they say, let me see it first and then I will believe. That's how they live. Amen? Are you Gentiles? Do you want to see things first before you believe? If you behave like that, then you don't have faith. Because faith, we have faith in God if we believe on the things we hope for and on the things we cannot see. Amen. Okay, so they also live on their senses. I've said that already. The believers on the other hand live by faith. May I see the hands of the believers? Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. The main difference we have from the, the Gentiles is our priority or pursuit. Does that make sense? Jesus said, the Gentiles seek on the things they might eat, they might wear or drink, but the believers seek the kingdom of God. To be honest with you, sometimes it is disappointing to see vacant seats, especially when the weather is good. And to be honest, sometimes it is dispersing for me as a pastor. Is there, I'm asking God, is there anything else I could do for these people to make, uh, to have a commitments to you? Why is it that some people are not really committed in Sunday services? I'm really wondering. Are you? <laughs> Do you know why? If until now your pursuit are just like the Gentiles, you're not different from them. Am I making my point clear with pursuit? Those are the things you're after. You're the, the, the things you're chasing. Okay? Seeking the kingdom of God mainly includes attending the service. Why? It is during the prayer meeting, it is during the service that the will to the word of God, the will of God through his word will be made known to his citizens. So without listening to his word, you would not know his will. Amen? Okay, I'll show you my point. Although it was Sabbath in the Old Testament, the New Testament believers should take the Lord's day holy, which is Sunday. No arguments about that? Why Sunday and in the Old Testament Sabbath? You understand why? Oh, I I've discussed it already. Yes. It was Sabbath on the Old Testament. Jesus was uh, risen on the Sunday. So there's no point celebrating still on the Sabbath because the resurrection of Jesus gives meaning to our faith. If there's, Jesus wasn't resurrected, all our faith is in vain. Amen. That's not my topic, but what I'm trying to say here, if you celebrate, if you believe that Sunday is the Lord's day, then it should be part of your heart's desire to be in the service. Now, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just, I'm just showing you my point. Amen. Okay, so it is a day of celebration, a day and praise of praise and worship, to praise and worship Him, and to listen to His word. That's why we call it worship service, because can you praise and worship the Lord in your home like this? Why not? Huh? Unless you have a big house, and what's the difference? Fellowship with other believers, and 
loads of things like what? Cleaning, <laughs> Cleaning the king. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just talking about the praise and worship service. Why is it called a service to you? The music ministry are rendering the service to the congregation. Why is it called a service? Brother Oyo is here. <laughs> it is called a service because they are being provided for free. And besides, we cannot have a, a service like that at home. Why? Do you have a band at home? Do you have drums at home? Do you have guitars at home? And even if you have guitars or drums at home, do you think Oh, it's Sunday today. We'll do, we'll, we'll praise the Lord. Come on, play the guitars, play the drums, and let's praise the Lord. No, we don't do that. Do you call? Do you do that? <laughs> so, we gather together in the name of Jesus, and God said, we're two or three gathered in his name. He is in the midst of us. Since Jesus or God is in the midst of us, and now the choir, music ministry team, is offering the worship or praise service. Amen. So we should take advantage of the service given. So it is our part to, be, to praise the Lord. I'll show you my point. Do you know that uh, the even the uh, uh, wait, where's where's my <laughs> oh <I'm> sorry. Nakatayo na ma hindi pa nakita. Jaime knows, brother Jaime knows very well the nerves on our on our feet. Am I right? A little bit. And even not just on our feet, on our hands as well. There are there are nerves in our hands connected to the organs of our body. Amen. That's why they say, if you press here, it's for your stomach. Am I right? Yes. Now, somehow, somewhere. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say here, they say. Do you believe that walking is the best ex exercise? Yes. Huh? Walking, running, whatever. Do you know why? Everything is moving because? Yes, very good. Since there are nerves on our feet, the organs of our body are being manipulated to work. Why? Because they are connected. That's why walking or running is the, or the very good exercise, the best exercise. And when God said in Psalm 47 verse 1, although this is my topic for the choir this afternoon, uh, I cannot wait to share this to you. Psalm 47 verse 1 Clap your hands to the Lord. And guess what happened when you clap your hands? Mahina yung tika patas. When we clap our hands, those nerves are manipulating the organs of our body so that we will become more alive again. If you don't believe that, try on a lousy day when you wake up in the morning, you feel, la you feel lazy to work, you feel lazy to get up, especially going to church, clap your hands, take a walk, and you will feel, oh, I'm okay now. In other words, when God commanded us to praise him, when God commanded us to clap our hands to him, he is trying 
uh, to say, I wanted the best health of you. So manipulate your the organs of your body by clapping your hands. Amen. Oh, try try to clap your hands at your house. <laughs> Your flatmates will be thinking, what happened to him? <laughs> Has he taken his medication? <laughs> Amen? So it is a day of celebration. Okay? It is by listening to his word that we come to know his will. Amen? Okay, this is a definition of the kingdom of God. It's the governing influence of a king over his territory or domain. Impacting it with his personal will, purpose, and intent, producing a culture, values, morals, and lifestyle that reflect the king's desire and nature for his citizen. So, if we are really seeking the kingdom of God, all what all we wanted is the impact or the influence of our king into our lives. Let's say, for example, when I was in. <laughs> When I was in Spain, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. That's, uh, that's another testimony of God's goodness. Uh, uh, Brother Dudu and Sister Lauren's children are already here. Thank you very much. Welcome to London. <laughs> okay, so... Let's say, I'll, I'll go back to my illustration. When I went to Spain, I, I drive for a few days there. I didn't have really a choice as to where I wanted to drive. I have to drive on the right hand, or the right side of the road. Why? Because I was in Spain. When I go back here in UK, although I, was, I wasn't driving a four wheels drive in the Philippines, I, I have to drive on the left side of the road. So, whatever your attitude, whatever your habits in the Philippines, you have to let it go. You have to set it aside because you are now in the UK. Amen? And it is so, when you are in the kingdom of God, whatever is not worthy, not pleasing, not according to the will of God, you should set it aside because it, it, it is not the will of the king. And that is what is meant by seek the kingdom of God, seeking the kingdom of God. But not all people can seek the kingdom of God. Why? Because they are not being influenced. They don't have uh, so much impact from the king. Amen? Are you with me? Okay, very good illustration. If you are not serious in attending church services, your life is not influenced by the king or his word. There's no much impact. Very good illustration. Do you come late to, to your work? Huh? Sometimes. How often? Huh? Always. Late always. My goodness, you're still Filipino. What a shame. You've been here for quite a while and <laughs> you're still practicing the Filipino habit of going to work late or going to your appointments late. But my question, my, my, my concern here is we might not be late to work often or not that much. But when it comes to church, I'm not talking to you guys. <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to church, we're so complacent. We're so relaxed. Why is that? Ah, you're not that really good in seeking the kingdom of God first. You might say, Pastor, I go to the remittance first. I want to send money to the Philippines. Why? Can't you send money to, to, to the Philippines on Saturdays? Oh, I'm working, Pastor. What, what about on your day off? What about after church? Uh, it's just a matter of priority, really. Am I right? Okay, so... If you're afraid, you cannot seek the kingdom of God. Second, you could not seek his righteousness. It says, seek first the kingdom of God 
and His righteousness. It didn't say, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Be, uh, before, He says, oh, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? To be in right relationship with Him. God's righteousness, or, or to be righteous in God, is to be in right relationship with Him. Let me ask you, are you all in right relationship with God? Ah, there's only one, pe one person in this room. <laughs> are you in a right relationship with God? Oh, why did you say, why, why did, didn't you answer in the first place then? <laughs> okay. Another meaning of to be righteous is those who are not in right, okay? Those who are not in right standing with God are mostly afraid of something. Uh, let's, say, let's say for example, if the second coming of Christ will happen today, or if your time to face the Lord will be today, are you confident to face the Lord? No fear? You will be saved? Huh? <laughs> I, 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 I show you the Hope's example. Hope in so, uh, Hope 42 verse 6, he said, My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. I abhor myself because I am a wicked man. Although the the Bible says Hope was a righteous man. Hope in his reaction upon seeing the presence of God. He said he valued himself. I abhor myself. I hated myself because I am a wicked man. Let me ask you, are you righteous more than Hope? No. If Hope said, I hated myself because I have seen God personally and I am a wicked man. How about us if we are not more righteous than who? Paktay. Are you getting my point? So if you know you are not really right with God, you are afraid. That's why 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 up to 19, it uh, it mentions about if he love perfect, a perfect love cast away fear. Are you with me? Okay. Can you explain the way you look at me? You are, you look puzzled. I don't want that faces. And I am here so that you won't get puzzled with God's word. You, for you to understand it. Let's say for example, giving tithes. Some people are afraid of losing money, afraid of nothing, not having enough, afraid that God won't do as He promised. Are you with me? Pastor, I, I thought we're talking about God's righteousness. Well, God's righteousness involves tithes. Or else, He won't say, if you don't give your tithes, you are a, you are a robber. Actually, we rob God if we don't give tithes. My topic is not about tithes. I'm just showing you an example. So if you're not giving your tithes, you must be afraid of something. Afraid of losing? Afraid of no budget? Afraid of more ota? Are you with me? So you see, there are lots of things we could have achieved if we're not afraid. And one example for that is seeking the righteousness of God. Or very good example is giving our tithes. Ah, if, if your reaction to tithes, I, I'm getting used to it, you know. <laughs> okay, so let's say uh, adulterers outside marriage relationship, they could be afraid of what the other person might say if they're going to stop their relationship. No offense, uh, uh, I had, I had uh, a short message uh, 
uh, exchange with my sister who is so righteous in her own eyes. <laughs> uh, I'd mentioned this to the Tuesday Bible study. My sister got three children with her husband. Then they decided to separate each other. They're, I don't know, they're divorced or illegally separated, whatever. I don't think there was a legal paper. And then she had a boyfriend, had one child with that boyfriend. And her, her boyfriend didn't even know that they had a child. And now she's living with the third partner. Do you think it's acceptable to God? Uh, we, are not, we are not judging them, but God's word is clear that adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. And guess what? Ah, she was even boasting or challenging me. Would you like me to tell your congregation about your attitude? Oh. Why? Because she's trying to accuse me of judging her uh, trying to accuse, uh, she's trying to accuse me that I'm not accepting her. Well, as I say on Bible Tuesday Bible study, I love sinners. I am a friend of sinners, but those sinners who are uh, who are behaving as if they are righteous, I hated them much. They are pretender. And guess what? Do you think this? My sister is. Is an atheist or atheist? No. She goes to church every Sunday. She attends charismatic, charismatic fellowship. And what happened? Do you think because, because adultery is acceptable in your thing, in the kingdom of God, that is acceptable? Oh, she got the gods. She challenged me. Would, would you like me to tell your congregation about your attitude? Oh, I told her, I told her before. No, no more comments. After she challenged me, I told her, yes, please. Do you think they would believe you? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, if you're afraid of something, you cannot seek the righteousness of God. Am I, am I, am I, am I making my point clear? Okay, so... They could be afraid to take the responsibilities alone or not willing to give up the pleasures. Uh, no wonder they're not willing, they're not willing to seek the righteousness of God because they're enjoying it, you know. What about if I give up this relationship? What happened to me? Medyo magre-renter na naman, walang katabi. <laughs> Winter is coming and you're gonna sleep on your own. <laughs> huh? <laughs> well, your blanket and your pillow would not hug you. <laughs> okay, so as a result, once they are aware of their guilt, they could become unaware of rights of their rights in the kingdom as well. Okay, if what we do is just the same with the worldly, then we are a failure. Are you with me? What difference does it make to be a Christian, to go to church every Sunday, and to say we are believers, and then we're just doing the same thing as the world do? It doesn't make no difference. Okay, so God's righteousness should be our priority above all else. Amen. Lots of us could not deny ourselves and take our, our cross daily in following Him. How could we seek the, the righteousness of God if we could not deny ourselves? Jesus said, if anyone, Luke 9, 23, if anyone desires to follow me, he must deny himself. Denying ourselves is to refuse what is due for us. Let's say for example, you deserve to have a rest. But you have to deny yourself. Ah, uh, another challenge in following the Lord if you will take up your cross daily. What do you think? You're confessing a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus had his own cross and he will be complaining, oh, what kind of church 
service is this. It's two hours. You're not even carrying a, a literal cross and you're already complaining. Again, Jesus said, if anyone desires to follow me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Not everybody understands that. Okay? Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied. No wonder believers don't have a life of satisfaction because they're after of so many things. They're, they have so many pursuits in life instead of seeking the kingdom and seeking his righteousness. Hello? Am I still talking to anybody here? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we could seek the kingdom of God. Uh, if we are not afraid, we could seek his righteousness. Third, we could have all our needs met. And we should not be afraid of all these things. Amen. Does it, is it applicable to us? Oh no. That's not our worries, our needs. Our worries are, is our wants or desires. I show you my point. For most of us, this is not the case. Why? We always have something to eat to drink and wear. Why? Did you see anybody who went to church naked because they don't have something to, to wear? It's not applicable for us. Did you see somebody? Why are you late? Oh, I'm too hungry. I didn't have dinner last night and I don't have breakfast. No. Some of us, our, our, our problems is, oh, I'm gaining weight again. <laughs> that means we have, we have a lot to eat. So it is not applicable for us. Maybe our worries are something like money to send back home, house rental, health, or future security. We don't worry with our food anymore. Shame on you if you're still struggling on that. Amen? Even for those who don't have papel de Japón, <laughs> as Pastor Bobby said, they got jobs and they're earning money and they don't have a problem of what to eat. Our other concerns are something like money to send back home, house rentals. Oh, I think house rentals apply, applies to us. Why, you not, why, why didn't you attend for, for so many Sundays in church? I'm working. I need to pay my house rentals. <laughs> uh, I could understand that. But do you think God understands that? No. Because he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But our father knows we need these things. If he, if he knows we need these things, he knows we, we, we badly needed them. Then that's the reason why he wanted to us to seek first the kingdom. Okay? So we don't have to be lengthy in prayer. Do you pray long? No? Uh, I, I understand if you say no. <laughs> Amen? Okay. Fourth, so we would be able to seek the kingdom of God. Second, seek his righteousness. And third, we would have all our needs met. Fourth, we could live a life free of worries. Are you living a life free of worries? No? What are you worried of? Are you free of worries? What kind of answer is that? Huh? <laughs> it doesn't mean you're working, you are worried. But what I'm trying to say, we could live a life free of worries. You might be thinking, oh, pastor, he is just arrogant to, to preach that because he, he is a nurse, my, his wife is a nurse, and they're doing well. Who told you? The more you earn, the more you have utang, you know? <laughs> the more you have debts. Debts to pay. The more you earn, the more your expenses goes higher. 
<laughs> sometimes, well, I salute you if you can keep your your expenses at this level, although your income goes higher. I can prove you that. When we were still in the Philippines, our debt, our utang is so little. When we were in London, oh my goodness, our utang is up to the neck. Anybody here who is free of utang, debt? Oh my goodness, you're just like me. <laughs> but at least I'm not worried. I'll show you one example. Uh, I, this is a very good testimony. Uh, July, as I've said, is not a good month for me because that's the month where I have to have my car service, I have to do the MOT, and for this year, I, 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 I'm really aware that something is wrong with my car. So I prayed to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to take the car to the to, for service. I prayed that it would pass to the MOT. Then it passed. But when I checked the recommendations, brake pads needs to be changed, one tire needs to be changed, uh, <laughs> water pump needs to be changed. So I keep on bringing back my, my car to the garage. And guess what? I sp uh, how much I spent? I don't. I, 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 I won't tell you how much. <laughs> but at least I was answered prayer. I said, Lord, let it pass for the MOT. Then it passed. And now I have to deal with the, with the repairs. <laughs> if it didn't pass with the MOT, I could not use my car now. Amen? <laughs> but it doesn't mean I'm worried about it. I know my provider. Yeah. Amen? Okay, so being afraid is a sign of worry, and we are commanded not to fear, not to worry. So if you're not afraid, you could live a life free of worries, okay? So, ah, this is the fifth one. We could respond to his calling if, we are not afraid. This is more complicated now. Mark chapter 10, verse 25. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Anybody here who is rich? No? Rich with utang. <laughs> okay, so Jesus said, it is really difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonishing among themselves, who then can be saved? Let's see what Peter said. But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Verse 28, Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Do you understand when Peter said, we have left all and followed you? So, come on. Did you read your Bibles? <laughs> Do you understand if Peter say, I have left and everything and followed you? You should, my goodness. Huh? Why? Because... P what Peter did? He left fishing and followed Jesus. So after Jesus said, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, then Peter said, Lord, we have left everything to follow you. He got the right, you know? What Peter is saying Lord, if it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, how about us? I left fishing, I left everything just to follow you. Would it be easy for us? What do you think? Maybe no. What's really your answer? No, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> so verse 29, Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Let me ask you, what's your reason of going out of, of bed? 
go to toilet at night. <laughs> Work. We left bed, we left our comfort zone because we want to go to work. But Peter, did he left his bed to go to work? No. He left his work. Huh? He left his work. So the reason why you wake up or you get up in the morning to take a shower if you feel <laughs> taking one. <laughs> Change your clothes because you wanted to go to work. But for Peter, it's not the same case. For Peter, he gets up, he gets out of bed. I'm not sure if there was shower that time. <laughs> because I know Bathsheba was <laughs> having a bath on, on the river somewhere. But what I'm trying to say, Peter is not going to work. Peter is going to follow Jesus and preach the gospel. So he's just saying, what about us? And Jesus said, whoever uh, left something will receive a hundredfold for the gospel's sake. Do you believe that whatever you give to Jesus, it will be given back to you? Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. When it comes to blessings, you're really alive to clap your hands. And it is so with your time. Some of us are complaining not to have much time, but if you give your time, you get out of bed this morning because you go to the service, then you will receive a hundred folds. Christians are complaining, Pastor, I don't really have time. Oh, niwala naman ako sa'yo. And I'm so sad to see people sleeping in church because they don't sleep that much at night. <laughs> Come on, wake up. As soon as the service finished, all oh, they're wide awake. <laughs> My goodness me. <laughs> they say, they say, we cannot have all things at the same time. Do you agree? For the young people, they have energy, they have time, but they don't have money. Yes? For the, the, <laughs> the people just like me in their middle age or the, uh, their early adulthood, we have money, but we don't have time. We still have energy. We have money, we have energy, but we don't have time. Does it make sense? When you get older, you have money, but you don't have, you have time, but you don't have energy. But what I'm trying to say, do you know what? Do you know what I just found out? I just found out my time is so, so, no, not, not short. I really have plenty of time. Do you agree with me? How come? Ah, that's a good question. How come I could say I've got plenty of time? <laughs> don't have to, ma to manage my time. I ca was able to say I've got plenty of time when I put my book writing aside. It's finished anyway. So I'm just looking for publisher. I only feel busy when I was writing a book. But after writing the book, oh my goodness, I've got really plenty of time. And you have plenty of time, you know? Oh, Pastor, how do you know? Why, do you think you're busier than me? <laughs> Especially if your children are not here, you should not be busier than me. Ah, I guarantee you, I'm the only pastor, or I'm the main pastor here, so I must be busier than you, and you're complaining. You, you don't have much time. 
Ah, I'm so impressed, especially, sorry to say, uh, just for example, you, you, you've, been so be you've been so blessed by God, yeah, you, your work days are just four days a week, isn't it? Imagine. If I would be working four days a week, wow. What? There, I got three days spare time. I think some of you just only work for five days a week. Or some of you are having uh, extra part-time on your days off. And then, after that, what are you doing? Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, if you give your time to the Lord, then the Lord will give you a hundredfold back. Maybe the reason why you don't have, you don't find time for yourself because you're not giving your time to the Lord. Amen? Ah, especially if you get out of bed because you are going to church services, you are serving the Lord, then you will receive a hundredfold. So don't, don't, be, don't be stingy with your time for the Lord. If you're going to the Lord, then give it your best. Amen? Oh, sabi ko sa inyo, complicated ito eh. Kaya, <laughs> you're so quiet. So Mark chapter 16, verse 15, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What uh, have we done about it? Ah, does it apply to me, Pastor? Yes. If you're a believer, if you believe in Jesus, then that that applies to you. But are we doing something about it? You don't think so? Or <laughs> you're just making it in a better, <laughs> better approach? Not really. <laughs> Why are we not doing anything? Maybe we're afraid. What would my children say? What, more, what would my friends say? What, how would they react when I share the gospel? Do you know what? When, when I was still, well, when I was a Catholic in, in college, when somebody preaches God's word, especially on the street, especially when I had a fraternity brother who was preaching, preaching God's word to us, I was thinking, oh, this man is crazy. <laughs> He's in the fraternity and preaching God's word. He, this man must be crazy. I found out right now, I'm the one crazy. <laughs> Amen. Because that's what Jesus said. Preach the gospel to every creature. So if you're not doing, doing what Jesus said, then Matthew chapter 7, verse 23 up to 27, if you would hear God's word and you're not doing it, you are like a fool. Building a house on top of the sun. Who is like the fool? A fool. Sino na yung kagaya ng baliw? E di baliw. Simple as that. So if you're not doing what you hear, you're just like a fool. So Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And we're not doing anything about it because we're afraid. Am I right? Uh, how far are we, f f are we from fulfilling it? I've just mentioned, I've just mentioned uh, on Tuesday Bible study regarding sharing God's word in Facebook. Sister Rika is sharing Joyce Mayer, John Beaver, uh, somebody are sharing God's word uh, regarding Joyce Mayer and so other ministries. But I haven't seen so, uh, lots of people sharing our, our sermons, our, pr our, our, our prayer meetings here. Why are you not sharing it? After, after I've shared, uh, I've preached in Tuesdays, I've, I've seen three people sharing. And there was, I think, more than 10 people on Tuesdays. And only 10 were sharing. Why is it? Are you afraid? Or ashamed of it? Hindi na makaimik. So you must be afraid of something. Why you are not sharing or fulfilling God's word? Am I right? Okay, so most of us are not doing it because we are struggling with fear. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Are you, 
happy when all these seats will be occupied? But why is it not occupied? Huh? It, it is, it, sometimes it is beyond our capabilities. It is on the preferences and priorities of other people. But have you done something to make that seat occupied? That's why I said in, uh, in my post in, uh, in uh, God Most High Facebook group, I created that group so that we can make follow-up for other, other members, especially who hasn't attended for a while. And maybe you're behaving just, oh, pastor will contact him or her. Hallelujah. What do you think of me? I don't have any work. Hello. Naka seryosa na sila. Are you with me? It is our responsibility at least to, to kumusta those people who are not here. But have we tried to ring them? Have we tried to message them? Hi, how are you? I haven't seen you for a while. Even if you don't miss, just try to pretend I miss you in church. Hallelujah. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. How I wish really that old people would give, just give their life just I have given my life to the Lord. Amen? Okay? <laughs> Six, we can declare and share the truth. Oh, here it comes. Number one enemy for declaring and sharing the truth is fear. Yes? I'm still wondering if you are still with me. You're still, okay? Even if proclaiming the truth would cost our lives, would you still declare and share the truth? Have you seen that post in Facebook that there are so many Christians, uh, they are getting killed or beheaded because of their faith in the Lord? And if you're, not, if you're afraid, then you will just say, oh, I'll just become a Muslim then. Makes sense. Just be practical. Would you die for the Lord? I hope so. <laughs> Luke chapter 12 verse 5, But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after he has, he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Also I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And Luke chapter 11 verse 23 says, Those who does not gather with me scatters. Ah, that is very strong. If you're not gathering with the Lord, you are scattering with the devil. What are you doing now? Gathering or scattering? You're really gathering or just neutral? He said, if you're not gathering, you are scattering. So whether we die or live, we are for Christ. Amen? Ah, last, we could be his living witnesses. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You could not be a witness somewhere without beginning on your hometown, on your own family. But are we a witnesses to them? Mm. Maybe <laughs> I remember somebody when her children asked, uh, Mama, are you still Catholic? <laughs> I can't remember very well her answer, but I guess so. <laughs> we just do it like that. <laughs> I guess she, she is Catholic or born again. I'm not sure. <laughs> Are you with me? So you should testify. You should be a living witness. Lots of believers are afraid of persecution. That's why they don't testify. Imagine if all believers will testify of the, good, the goodness of God, will share the, the truth of God, then lots of people will believe in God. But we are not doing anything. 
I had a, a very good conversation with Pastor Tito last night. Uh, we had a good chat because uh, he got a, a burden in him, in his ministry, and I could not say I don't have a burden. Actually, most of the burden of the church are on me first. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and he said, the, uh, when, when we're, we're exchanging our ideas and concerns in church, there are people in church who are Zimbabwe. I was thinking, what does Zimbabwe means? Means, and he he spelled it right in Tagalog, Zimbabwe. <laughs> they just go to church and then go home, do nothing. <laughs> Zimbabwe. <laughs> go to church, do nothing, go home. That's Zimbabwe, isn't it? <laughs> are you a Zimbabwe? Go to church, go home, and do nothing? Huh? Kumain naman. That's even worse. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, are you doing something as a witness for the truth? As a part of your service for the Lord? If you're not doing anything, you're just simba <laughs> away. So they could be afraid of the enemy's work against those who testify to Christ. Amen? Do you want to be a Simba away all the, uh, all the days of your life? No. Then do something. Be a witness. Okay. <laughs> ah, I'm finished. <laughs> Conclusion? Where's my challenge? Ah, I didn't see... I deleted the slide for the challenge. Huh? <laughs> Nalaglag ang challenge. My challenge is, are you a Simba Uwe? <laughs> Do you just go to church and go home doing nothing? <laughs> so, with this topic that, that we have heard, there are so many things we could have achieved, we could have done if we're not afraid. Do you want to deal and face your fear right now and serve the Lord? Yes? My conclusion, Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And verse 7 says, 13, I mean, Psalm 27, verse 13. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? I would, huh? I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? And fortunately, I didn't have my holiday for ne uh, July next year. So I have to go home by the end of January, next, this coming January, to visit our church in, in Batangas and Mindoro. Uh, and that is another responsibility for me. But my principle is I went to Kenya twice to visit people I don't know, different skin from us. <laughs> and the good thing when I went to Kenya, I look handsome to them, you know. Negro <laughs> But with, the, with other responsibilities back home, I'm not afraid. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. And again in verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We should be able to seek the kingdom of God. We should be able to seek the righteousness of God. We should be free from worries. We should be malimutan yun na agad. Okay, so these are the things we would be able to achieve if we're not afraid. 
Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the righteousness of God. Have all our things uh, needs met. Then, fourth, free of worries. Then, we could answer his calling. We could be his living witnesses. Amen? We, could be, we would be able to declare and share the truth. At least, by just sharing the truth to your loved ones, they would come to believe the Lord. Because, after all, Acts 1631, only one person, if a person believes in the Lord, his whole household will be saved. If you wanted to save, save them and serve the Lord. Yes, I invite you to stand.